I'm going to try to, as much as I can, talk really broadly about what college coaches look for. And if there's something specific that I will tell you, this is what I think. And that, that's really specific to me. The first thing is when I go look for players, and I spend an awful lot of time in gyms. I watch a lot of practices. I watch a lot of games, AAU and high school. Some things are obvious. I look for height, I look for quickness, I look for jumping ability, I look for your ability to handle the basketball, I look for your ability to shoot the basketball. Those things, I would think, are pretty self-evident. I also look at everything else. I want to know, how do you react when an official blows a call? You get hammered and there's no whistle. How do you react? I want to see that. How do you react when you're wide open and your teammate doesn't throw you the ball? I want to see that. How do you react when coach takes you out of the game? Do you run to the bench? Do you walk to the bench? When you get to the bench, do you dap everybody up? Or do you go down and grab a towel, put it over your head, and mope? I want to know all of that. I want to see how you talk with your coach when he tries to coach you. I want to see, do you roll your eyes or do you make eye contact? Do you shrug your shoulders and throw your hands? This is a position that I hate with my own players. I hate this position. I'm looking for that. I want to see how you talk with your parents after the game. How do you respond to mom or dad or whomever is there with you after the game? Everything that you do, and I tell my players this all the time, from the first meeting in August throughout, the, you are evaluated on everything you do. You are evaluated on everything you do. Yes, I am concerned with you know, what's your shooting percentage? What's your free throw percentage? How many turnovers? I, all that's really important. Because if you don't have talent, well, then you know, it probably stops there. But all this other stuff, I've recruited players with less talent, but who have all the other stuff. I want to know how physically, mentally, and emotionally tough you are. Toughness is really, really important. Your ability to handle adverse situations, because we're all going to have them. Uh, we had a dinner at Wesleyan two nights ago, and Jeff Capel, who's been the associate head coach at Duke, and he's now the head coach at Pittsburgh, spoke at our dinner, a uh, big fundraising thing that we do. And he told a story about how he wasn't particularly mentally tough as a freshman, and he kept calling home, telling his mother, you know, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Coach is too hard on me. And how his dad came and kind of straightened that out. Uh, you've got to be able to deal with a coach. Who's, if coaches aren't on you, then either maybe they aren't prepared to coach a player at your level or They've given up on you, or like they should be on you to get the most out of you. They should push you to your limits, and you should want to be coached. And so you've got to be tough to handle when a guy is honest with you and tells you, hey, you got to work on your left hand. You can't go left. Instead of griping about that or coming home and complaining, you know, coach said I can't dribble with my left hand. Well, then do something about it. And the same is true in any situation. How do you react when your team is down 20? Do you start walking up and down the court and, and kind of give up? Or do you dig in and try to fight? Those things are all important in the recruiting process. Um, IQ is really important. Like, how well do you know the game? Like, if you can run and jump, and boy, that was a spectacular dunk, and, but you don't understand how to set a screen, 
how to get a better angle to make a post pass, how to rotate defensively. Communication is huge. I look for great communicators on the court. Are you talking on defense? Are you talking on offense? Are you helping your teammates? Are you talking on the bench? Do you go over and sit on the bench and just count the minutes that I'm ready to go back in? Or are you encouraging your teammates on the floor? Are you talking to them? You know, watch, the shooter's in the corner. That five, he's a shooter. Make sure, he, you know, like, are you talking to those guys? Or are you sitting over there, again, just waiting for your time to get back on the court? All those things are really important. Everything you do. Coaches are watching you. When you go to these events, how many of you played in Greensboro this past weekend? Okay. I know some of you did. How many of you played somewhere else? Rock Hill, Charlotte. Um, you older guys, you play anywhere this past weekend? Charlotte? Okay. Trust me. When you guys go to the concession stand to get a Gatorade, if a coach was watching you during the game, he's probably watching you buy that Gatorade. Did you say please and thank you? Like, I'm watching. You may not know we're watching, but coaches are watching. Uh, how you carry yourself. You know, uh, we all understand that I might say something to my team in the locker room that I might not say standing here right now. That might occur. You guys might say something to each other when you're just with your guys. Like if all of us older folks were outside the room, you might say something. To, like we get that. But when you're in the middle of the gym or sitting in the stands or at the concession stand in the lobby, you want to watch what you say, how you act, what you insinuate, and please, please, Please watch your social media accounts. I'm checking it out. If, if I'm checking you out, I am checking out your social media. And you've all heard before, I'm sure you've heard, if, if you hit send, it's out there. Whether, you know, whether it's something that disappears or whether it's something that you take down, once it's out there, it's out there. And I know of players who have scholarship offers and then they don't because of something they had on social media. That's not just a, like, I'm not just, like, that happens. So you better be smart. We tell our guys to think, all right? We tell our guys to think when it comes to social media. And what that means, before you hit send, before you hit send, is it true? Is it helpful? And I'm going to draw a blank now. Is it true? Is it helpful? Um, can your grandmother read it? Well, yeah. Can your grandmother read it? Um, is it kind? Is it necessary? Those are the things you need to be thinking about before you hit send. And some things that might seem really funny on Saturday night at 11 o'clock when it's just the boys hanging out, when you're in your coach's office on Monday morning, might not be as funny. So you got to be really smart all the time, around the clock. You were always going to have basketball player attached to your name. If you're a player here at Millbrook High School, if you're a player at NC State, if you're a player at NC Central, if you're a player at NC Wesleyan, it doesn't matter. When something happens on campus, good or bad, you know, like you do something really good and you help the librarian. Uh, you know, they're going to say, you know that basketball player? So he, he did a great thing today. And the same thing is true if something bad happens. You're going to say, you know that basketball player, so-and-so? So everywhere you go, you're under a different microscope. That's one of the things that comes with it. You want all the you, you want the gear, you got all WCBA gear, you want all the high school gear, you want to get the college gear, you want to you know, rock that, go everywhere. And uh, you know what? Well, part of what comes with that is there's a different level of accountability and expectation that is placed on you. And you've got to accept that as part of the deal. If you want to be a basketball player, that's, that's part of it. 